If you're still learning to code have in 2025, world, I think it'll be now very you're not going to make it. This like, is the I mean, miracle. We got to be real. This is the miracle of our What's going on? Is, the are country, we doing like the people that understand. Software engineering is in a really weird place right now, as it's one of the first high profile jobs which is directly in the firing line of AI. And people like myself, who spent years learning to code, crafting this skill, I remember once I spent a weekend making a to-do app. Now a chatbot can do that within a second. And I've been thinking about the future of software engineering for about two years. And I'm gonna be real with you, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. So this is my take on where it's going, what the role will look like in the future, and also juniors, what impact will AI have on juniors and what you can do to protect yourself as well. One caveat though, is that humans are pretty bad at predicting things. People in tech are very bad at predicting things. They usually get it wrong. And like, for example, there's this guy, he's one of the godfathers of AI, and years and years ago, he predicted that radiography would be automated by AI. And he actually said, don't become a radiographer. You won't, the job won't exist in a few years. Years and years, years, years and years later, now there's a shortage of radiographers. So this is a little example, but it's a great example of people just generally are quite bad at predicting things, and particularly job markets. Job markets are incredibly hard to predict. They're very fluid, they're very nimble. Okay, so it's a bit awkward now because I've just said that tech people are bad at predicting things. Humans, human beings are bad at predicting the future. Um, but you're gonna watch a random guy on YouTube make a video about the future of software engineering. Um, so like the video, I guess, and subscribe. Now, before we get into this, very quick story time. So I used to be a recruiter and I recruited in this very niche area of the pharmaceutical sector. And when I started, I was given clients and candidates to call to try and get jobs. So I was calling these people and they were all saying the same thing about the job. They were saying that it's gonna be automated soon and then that a lot of jobs are going to India. So I was like, holy shit, this is not good for me because a recruiter places people in jobs. But candidates were just telling me that there was no junior jobs anymore and there was just less and less jobs. And I think worst case scenario, this will just happen also with software engineering. And this evolution, this change in the job has been happening for years, whether you know it or not. Because technology, unlike many jobs, is just you need to constantly upskill, particularly in certain areas. Like for example, when I first started in 2020, you could get a job knowing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Those days are long gone. And now I've just seen the job evolve so much because technology has changed. Now it encompasses cloud. So a lot of roles will ask you for cloud certifications. DevOps, you know, a lot of roles, you'll have to dip into like Docker and Kubernetes and DevOps stuff. So the roles evolved a lot and this will continue in the future. But it's gonna evolve in a much more dramatic way and the role's gonna change a lot. And you've got people who are scared about this. They're watching work they do now become automated and they're fearful of their job security. Then you got people who are really excited. They love using these tools and they're looking at opportunities. And as I mentioned, I could be wrong, but how I see it evolving is that it becomes a lot more strategic and you're in essence a CTO of these AI agents who are autonomous and you will kind of oversee them. You'll review their code, almost like an app administrator. And a lot of your job will be focused on the business needs, converting those business needs into a product. So almost encompassing engineering and product management. So right now you have, in big tech for example, they have these large bloated development teams which are huge. I just think those will become less and less common and there will be much smaller teams but a lot more software teams. And for example, freelance developers will do very well. So there'll be, if you look at the role of a developer in a startup, it'll be much more like that. Now a good question is how will AI impact the chances of a junior or a computer science student getting a job as a software engineer or just getting into tech in general? And the answer to this is that no one knows. Being a junior or trying to get into the industry is going to be disrupted a lot and the pathways that exist now might not even exist anymore. Key thing to remember is that no one can predict this, but job markets are very nimble. They evolve and they adapt. So talent will always find a way to get through but the pathway, I think, will be a lot different to the point where there might not even be a junior role anymore. You work in a different area and then you maybe you enter at the mid-level or senior, but talent will always find a way through. So if you wanna do this profession, you wanna be a software engineer, you wanna work in tech, you've just gotta block that out, control what you can, upskill and learn what you need to learn right now. And then thinking about 
five, 10 years time is not useful for you. Just focus on what you need to learn now to get your foot in the door now. But there will be new roles and new opportunities which we can't even comprehend right now. Like for example, I do content creation and I'm a software engineer. Content creation didn't exist like 30, five years ago. So you, if you said to someone, you're gonna be a content creator, 35 years ago, they would have been like, what the hell is that? In the same sense, there will be new jobs created through this, which engineers, developers, programmers, whatever you wanna call them, will be really well suited to take advantage. For example, there's a really interesting one proposed by Andrew Ng, where he said there'll be new roles and he thinks one will be an AI product manager. So he says, the demand for good AI product managers will be huge. In addition to growing AI product management as a discipline, perhaps some engineers will also end up doing more product management work. So this makes sense because engineers have a deep understanding of software, and this could be an example of a new role. A lot of people will jump into, not because they can't get a job, but because there'll be a lot of opportunity in it. So there'll be a lot less like specialist areas and the role will be a lot more generalist and will obviously do a lot less routine tasks. And with this as well, like architecture, like system design, these kind of things become really important, like performance, readability, sustainability of code, all these things. So the high level stuff will be more important than the traditional routine stuff we do now. Thank you to Lucid Link for sponsoring this portion of today's video. All right, you know what's worse than debugging a nightmare piece of code? It's time wasted on meetings, emails, and another one waiting for files to download. Sometimes you just need one asset, but instead you're downloading an entire bloated folder. You're just trying to get work done, but instead you're just stuck watching a progress bar slowly move forward. But a really interesting product which fixes this is called Lucid Link. And you can think of it like cloud storage that works like a local drive on your computer. So you can instantly access massive files from your team without downloading or syncing. So just click, open, and boom, your files are ready to go. So no more time or storage space being eaten up by unnecessary downloads. You'll also get less files like this from your project manager. And this is great for programmers because you can focus on more coding rather than admin or waiting for files to download. So whether you're working with code or game assets, huge video files, Lucid Link makes it easier to share as a team. It's a type of product that once you try it, you usually stick with it because it will just streamline the way you collaborate and also speed up your workflow. If you do want to try it out, there is a link in the description to check out Lucid Link. And I've seen some people talk about front end and back end, saying that front end is going to be like not needed anymore because you can just go to VO. It will build the front end for you, and you don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, but I think what that's missing is that there's almost going to be an arms race going on for the most intuitive, beautiful, and easy to use AI. So how a user interacts with the AI is going to be so important because could potentially be worth billions. Like look at ChatGPT, it's just so like intuitive to use. So areas like front end, UX and user research, those are gonna be so crucial because there's so much at stake. And another trend as well I see is that I think it's been going on for years now. Anyone who's watching this, who's worked professionally on a code base will know that security is becoming more and more like crucial. It's this idea of software development and cybersecurity are kind of like merging together. Um, because years ago you'd make an app and then at the end of it, you'd be like, okay, how do we make this thing secure? Nowadays, the security is just a focus throughout the whole process. And there's an area called AppSec, which is one of the best paid areas in cyber, cybersecurity. And basically you look at vulnerabilities throughout the whole process as you're making the app to make it more secure. And there's gonna be so much like really AI generate code that fixing those vulnerabilities and making it secure is gonna be crucial. Okay, just a quick break from this AI apocalypse talk. I do have a free newsletter where I talk about stuff like this, tech trends, what I'm building, what I'm learning, and life as a digital nomad, it's totally free. And I have a blog post on this exact topic. So link in the description, check it out if you wanna subscribe, it's free. And you might be watching this thinking like, what the hell can I do to protect myself in the future from AI? And I think there's like two options. You've either got like the proactive option or you got the chilled option. Okay, firstly, the chilled version. So you, you're not really doing too much. You're not freaking out. You're not like worrying about it too much. You're just keeping an eye on trends and learning what you need to when you need to. So use these AI tools, get really good at that, and just keep an eye on job postings in your area and just look at like trends, look at new skills which are like appearing. And when you need to be adaptable, learn what you need to when you need to. Or there's a proactive thing you can do and that is to diversify. So. If you're a back-end developer, maybe learn front-end, or you're front-end look at UX, or like system design, or 
AI and machine learning. There's loads of different things you can learn. And for startups, they love this because if you're a developer and you can, you're an expert in one thing, but you can also help on tickets in a different area, they love that. So you won't regret that. So diversifying your skill set is a great thing to do. But I think the best thing you can do to protect yourself from AI is just to get good at soft skills like emotional intelligence, being able to manage people, communicate well, like just being working well within a team. If you get good at these skills and you're technical, you, it becomes, AI becomes a non-issue because you can get any job you want in tech. You can get product management, project management, managing roles. What I've learned in tech is like the, the closer you get to like the talking jobs, like people management and sales, that's where the best paid jobs are in tech. So getting good at soft skills means this whole AI thing becomes a non-issue. And if you are worried about this, a really good resource is the World Economic Forum Jobs of Tomorrow's Report. And the World Economic Forum is like this forum of rich people who they think about how to get richer, but they do a really good report on the skills and the jobs of tomorrow. And one of the key skills they highlight, they call it tech literacy, which is basically just being good with technology, being adaptable, like for example, knowing how to use these AI skills. This is gonna be one of the most important skills of the next decade. And obviously, software engineering is this. It's being able to problem solve and use tech well. And if you're watching this and you're really worried about your future because of AI, and you wanna work in tech or you work in tech, technology is change and you did sign up for this. So the one constant with technology is it constantly changes and it's just being adaptable. Like clearly we're going through the biggest change since the internet, but I don't wanna be working on the same technology in 10 years. Like, do I still wanna be doing like React projects in 10 years? No. So part of it is exciting that we don't know what we're gonna be working on. We don't know what problems there are to solve, but there's still gonna be problems to solve and they're gonna need people like you to solve them. But one thing to think about in all this is that we're all in this together, all right? We all could be unemployed, all of us, or there might be an AI apocalypse, or it could be exciting. But the most important thing is that you like the video and you subscribe for more content like this. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next one.